If you've clicked on this video, you likely know about the AI art space, but did you know that you can now generate images using your own likeness and a near infinite number of styles? Stick around and I'll show you how I took these 20 photos of myself and got an open source and free to use AI to create these. It's up for debate just how many photos you need to get this working, but I've been recommended 20 and that's the number I've been using. I've also seen some people grabbing random photos that they have from their social media, but when watching Corridor Crew's video on this, it looked like they took the images in a more controlled environment. If you've got a modern smartphone, you should be able to make it so your capture settings are using a 1x1 one one aspect ratio. If not, just keep this in mind when you're taking the photos, you can always crop them later. You should capture 3 images showing your full body, 5 from your chest to the top of your head, and 12 that are close up of your face. Most of mine have been taken looking forward or at a 45 degree angle either left or right. You want the lighting to be as even as possible so no strong shadows across the face. They should be in focus and the idea is to show a variety of emotions. Happy, sad, angry, confused? <laughs> it's really up to you. Be as wild as you like, just don't obstruct your face while doing it. I've also been told that you get better results if the photos have different backgrounds, although I've not tried this myself. There are dozens of ways to crop the photos to 512 by 512 pixels. I use Photoshop, creating a new composition, loading my photos in and then exporting them as PNGs, but the easier way is to use the Burmy link below. You can upload and resize your photos within this browser. Once you've exported those images, it's time to open the Dreambooth Google Colab link, which I've put down in the description below. If this looks intimidating, do not be worried. It's actually really simple to follow. At least it is today on the 1st of October 2022. What you're seeing is a bunch of code designed by someone called Shivam. As you activate the nodes by hitting the tiny play buttons, it's going to run code while accessing GPUs from Google. This is how you can generate images even without having a GPU with 24 gigs of VRAM. So you can get started by clicking the first play button on the page. You'll be met with a warning, but it's only explaining that it's being loaded via GitHub rather than Google, and that's okay, so click and run it anyway. Now, if it's your first time using this Colab doc, that should be it, and eventually you'll see a tick next to the play button that you pressed. That'll mean it's time to move on to the next node. But if you didn't, and you instead got another warning saying you can't connect with a GPU, it means that your access has been revoked for a short time. You see, if you're not a paying member of Colab, they'll do this every now and again, so you don't use up all the resources. And it is impossible to get the rest of the code working without having it connected. So there's two workarounds if you do get this issue. One, you pay for Colab, or two, you connect with a different email and restart the Colab link. Moving on, click on the node for install requirements. Be mindful not to get carried away and click other links before the previous one has finished. Again, you'll know if it has because you'll see a green tick next to the node. Once that's done, install the Xformers. Now it's time to sort out Hugging Face. For this bit, you'll need to make an account. I'll put another link in the description below for that as well. There's not a whole lot you have to do to get it set up, but once you're in, you want to revisit the link in the description and make sure you've clicked the checkbox that says you accept the model license. Then it's time to create an access token and this is what's going to allow you to use Stable Diffusion and Dreambooth together. On the Hugging Face website, you'll see your profile icon in the top right of the screen. Click it and go to settings. Now halfway down the list on the left, you'll see a tab called Access Tokens. Click on New, write a name for your token. It can be anything you like. I've got into the habit of writing my prompt word, which is essentially what you'll type into Dreambooth to tell you want to incorporate your images into the artwork. Set the role to write and then generate the token. Then copy it to the clipboard, which is the two squares next to the word show. Go back into the Google Colab doc and paste it into the token window. Click login and you're set. Now the next node is going to take some tweaking. Keep the model name the same. In the instance directory, replace the SKS with an input folder name of your choosing. And this is where you're going to put your images. And then the class name. It does two things. It'll be the second part of the prompts that you put into Dreambooth to get it to use your photos, but it'll also help train your AI data. For example, if you put woman, it's going to train your images on AI generated women. If you put man, it's going to train it on AI generated men. If you put person, you'll get a mixture of both. Now, I've tried a couple of classes and I think person works the best. If you go for man or woman, the results that you end up getting, at least for me, seem a lot more generic and less like your original photos. 
In this version of Colab, there's a button to save all the training data and models to your G drive. Definitely do that. There isn't a way at the moment to use this data locally, at least not to my knowledge, but there are people working on converters, which will eventually allow you to take this data into the web UI version, which I've shown in the previous video. I'll link that down in the description below as well. Finally, you want to name your output directory, and then you can run this as a node. You can ignore the next node though. Instead, we're going to take the images from our computer and drop them directly into the input directory we've created previously. You'll see on the left side of the browser, there's a little folder icon. Click on that, then into data, and it'll reveal the folder you've created. Then drag your images into this folder, wait for it to finish uploading, ignore clicking the node. You've essentially done that part by dragging and dropping the files in. And now you're ready to train. Before you click play on this one, it's important to change the settings. You'll see it says photos of SKS class name in red by the instance prompt. Change this to your desired prompt. I've previously used my initial and then my last name, but it can be anything. In this example, I've put real James. Change the class prompt to the class prompts you had earlier, i.e. person, woman, or man. There are a couple of other values that can be changed. I've played around with num class images. I originally had it on 200, then 100, and now 12. I believe by keeping this low, you're more likely to get images that more closely resemble your own photos. And then I put the training steps on 1000. With that, it's all sorted, it's time to run the node. Now, this can take a while, between half an hour and an hour. Don't make the mistake of leaving the collab sheet. If you do, you'll have to start all over again. Not only that, if you're inactive on the collab for too long, parts of it can drop out. If that happens, you'll have to go to the runtime tab at the top, then disconnect and delete runtime and start all over again. What I've ended up doing is scrolling about on it every minute or so, clicking the inference tab on and off, just making it seem like I'm busy on the page. Bit of a pain, but it's worth doing to avoid timing out. Finally, once the data has been trained and the node has the green tick, you can run the inference node. This just pulls in all the model data, which is the file you've just been training. You can hit the random seed and it's finally time to start making images. Now for the fun part, you can literally type anything you want. And when you hit play, the AI will make images. But if you want to get images using the data you just trained, you have to use your prompt and class name together. Like this example, type anything you fancy, hit the node, wait and see what you get. It can be a bit of a lottery to get something interesting. And sometimes it's worth just replaying the node on the same prompt until you get something cool. But if you want to level up your prompts and get some really interesting looking images, I recommend taking a look at Lexica. The link's in the description below. It's basically a website that shows you other AI artworks and it reveals the prompts used to make them. Just click on an image that you like the style of, copy the prompt, paste it into your Google Colab doc, tweak the description so it has both your prompt and class in there and run it until you get something you like. If you're getting an opposite gender to the one that you'd like, I've found that simply putting male or female after your class fixes it. And there's also another value that you can tweak or make your artworks look a bit more abstract looking. And then at the other end of the spectrum, a little more detailed is this value here. And I found the sweet spot is between 3.5 and 10. And there you go. That's everything you need to know on how to do this. If you want to train a different model, just make sure you reset using the runtime tab and then disconnect and delete runtime. Reopen the browser, preferably with a different email login if you've not got Colab Pro and go again. If you've found this guide useful, you might like to check out this other video I've made on the subject of AI art. That one's fairly beginner friendly too. I've recently made a Discord. If you do make anything interesting and want to share it or you have questions, you can get me on there. And again, I'll leave a link to that below.